Today we're going to talk about the different company and we're going to talk about the collection Excessives Oud Shamash and Oud for Love. Names that are right up my alley, of course. <laughs> uh, both of these were created in 2012 and the perfumer behind both of these is Boutran Douchefer. Now I don't know why that is, I would like to find out uh, why, because Celine Elena is the nose behind the different company and she's got a fantastic nose. So I don't know why she would seek assistance elsewhere for her ouds. Me personally, if that was my company, I would be a little selfish and I would want the challenge of creating my own ouds. Uh, but I don't know why it is, here they are, Bertrand did them, so let's talk about them. Uh, when it comes to ouds, I am a big fan of oud fragrances, as most of you know. When it comes to the very, very strong in-your-face ouds, for me, there is nothing like it. Oh, it's just uh, heaven to my nose. It's the most exotic scent that I've ever smelled, and uh, it brings about this tranquility to my spirit, to my soul. Uh, it takes me on a little trip. I just love the feeling that powerful ouds uh, bring to me. Just awesome. But that's only one face. There are many faces of oud. Lots of you have probably seen oud mixed with rose. They seem to do that a lot. Uh, most of the time I'm not a fan, but there are uh, a couple of them lately, especially one. We'll talk about that now that I think is just fantastic. But that's just another face. I mean oud can portray itself so differently in fragrances depending on how it's used. You know, it can come off uh, very barnyard if it's strong, it can come off medicinal, it can come off like incense, it can come off like a little bit of a vetiver quality to it, it can come off dry, it can come off juicy, it can come off woody, it can just add a nice warm backdrop to a fragrance when it's not used very powerfully, and oud can be mixed with many different notes. A lot of the fragrances that you see out there that have oud in the title really don't even need to have oud in the title as far as I'm concerned. It's not like when you're talking about vetivers. You know, uh, when you're talking about something like Vetiver Extraordinaire or Etro's Vetiver uh, or Vetivero by Diptyque uh, or Chanel Sycamore, it doesn't have Vetiver in the name, but when you're talking about most fragrances that have Vetiver right in the name, that is the star note. That is the note that's in your face, uh, <laughs> vetiver, you know, and the rest of the notes are minimal and just the supporting cast. When it comes to ouds, most of the ouds that we encounter, oud is just a supporting player. And sometimes it's just very, very minimal and doesn't really need to have its name in the title, I think. You know, if they were to create ouds like vetivers, where the oud was the main character in your face. I would definitely, and I do definitely, love fragrances like that, but I don't think that they would be very popular, especially, uh, you know, in the United States. I don't think they would go over very well because most people that uh, <laughs> I have had smell, get their nose on in your face ouds are definitely not a fan. <laughs> but I am. Um, so, uh, when it comes to Oud Shamash and Oud for Love, of course, I'm uh, very interested in checking these out, and I've been waiting for these for quite a long time, because only uh, until recently were these available in the United States. So, when I got an email from Adas David Neustis saying that they, had, that they had these in stock, and Lucky Scent does now too, uh, I was very excited, and of course, uh, I was on the hunt. Had to get my nose on these, because I'm always interested to see what is going to come out of a person's oud fragrance. Uh, what kind of creativity have they done? Now, when it comes to these two fragrances, if you're looking for oud, I would look elsewhere. <laughs> In fact, uh, I would have named these fragrances differently. I would have named oud shamash, sandalwood shamash, and I would have named Oud for Love, Iris for Love. Now, I'm not ripping on these fragrances. The quality is fantastic. It's just that if you want Oud, these are not it. Uh, Oud Shamash, it does. It starts off spicy. you got a lot of spices at the top. Uh, you've got saffron, cinnamon, pink pepper, divana. And it's a little woody at the top as well, which I love. It pulls off 
a similar sort of feel like Al Oud does. And both of these fragrances at the top remind me of like spicy potpourri, which I love, absolutely love that. But quickly, uh, within about an hour, Oud Shamash fades into a very soft and gentle sandalwood rose fragrance. Now they use Turkish rose in this, which Turkish rose is just fantastic. But the Turkish rose, the rose in this, is very minimal. So the rose doesn't really get too heavy, it doesn't get too floral, it doesn't get too powdery. Uh, the main player is this very soft, gentle sandalwood. Now let's talk about some of the other notes mentioned in this fragrance. They mentioned rum. Now I wouldn't really be thinking a boozy feel out of this fragrance. And they mentioned ambergris and bourbon vanilla. Very, very minimal with both of those. And they mentioned leather accord. I definitely uh, do not pull any leather out of this fragrance. Sandalwood and Rose, that's it, baby. <laughs> and this one goes for $195 for a 50 ml. Uh, so it's pretty pricey. Now, let's move on to Oud for Love. Now with this one, uh, in the note breakdown, there's a lot of spices listed at the top as well. Uh, saffron, coriander, cumin, <laughs> cloves, uh, just a touch of cloves. But with this one, the spice is not in your face. Definitely not. It's very, very minimal. And what's the main player? Uh, the main aura of this fragrance is iris and sandalwood. But the iris in this, I wouldn't be thinking like uh, makeup spectrum. It stays very soft, uh, creamy, and powdery. A woman at work told me I smelled like Play-Doh. I can see that. It has that kind of quality with it. Uh, very nicely done. Is there oud in there? Not really. Uh, but a very nicely done iris fragrance, I think. In fact, Oud for Love, I prefer this one over Oud Shamash, and it's an iris fragrance. <laughs> uh, but it's done so well. I love uh, just the very minimal, the whisper of spices that are flowing with that iris and sandalwood. And what I really love is the journey that this one takes you on, because this one actually has some nice development throughout the day. And what starts joining the fun uh, about an hour or two later is vetiver. And the vetiver, it doesn't get very dominant, uh, but the way it acts in this blend is, is just awesome. It creates this, this little whisper, this raspiness of uh, green vetiver uh, that just joins the iris. And I just absolutely love that. And what also starts coming into play in the heart is the castorium. Uh, very mild, just a very mild animalic sweetness uh, with the iris and the vetiver. And as this fragrance keeps developing, uh, the creaminess from the iris and sandalwood changes to more of caramelized amber, almost like uh, a cocoa type of feel. Uh, but it's very soft. It's very gentle. This one as well, I would give it in the projection area. I would give this one average, and I would give Oud Shamash a little under average. And when it comes to longevity with Oud for Love, this stuff goes clear into the next day. But Oud Shamash, not so much. Maybe like six to eight hours, I would give it that. Uh, so I would rank Oud for Love as the better of the two, but I don't know. They work differently for everybody, and I know that there's a lot of fans of Oud Shamash out there. And I have also read that some people have found Oud for Love too feminine. There are a lot of florals in this one. I mean, we got iris, tuberose, heliotrope. <laughs> Lots of notes for me that I look at and go, stay away. <laughs> but when they're done right, when they're used softly, for me, it's okay. They can be very nice in a blend. It's just when they are in your face, boom, uh, do not like that. I'm not, I'm not a floral kind of guy, as most of you know. And Oud for Love, it is a little bit powdery, and I'm not a fan of overly powdery fragrances either, but the powder in this is soft. There's enough creaminess there. It doesn't get abrasive. It doesn't come across as feminine. To me, both of these fragrances, I feel, are dead center unisex. Some people talk about Oud Shamash as being uh, more masculine. That one's pretty straight unisex to me as well. I mean, sandalwood and rose. That one's uh, a little powdery as well, uh, but the creaminess of the sandalwood kind of outweighs that and it stays very gentle. Uh, so both of these fragrances are very, very nice. They're just not oud ones. You know, if you're looking for 
uh, soft and gentle. If you're looking for sandalwood and rose, oud shamash is great. If you're looking for a nice, uh, soft iris fragrance with, I don't know, a little bit of toughness there, uh, a little bit of vetiver coming in, <laughs> a little bit of castorium, uh, oud for love is a great one to look into for sure. But that is uh, my thoughts on both of these fragrances. I wouldn't say that I'm disappointed. Maybe I am just a little bit because, you know, I was hoping to see something great done with Oud and you're really not going to find that in these. At least I didn't. Uh, but anyways, the journey is always fun and these did prove to be fantastic fragrances. Uh, but to me, just okay. <laughs> Nothing that really jumps out. You know, three and a half out of five stars, a little bit better than average. <laughs> uh, but, oh, and as far as like the comparison with Al Oud, Oud Shamash compared to Al Oud, I'm still sticking with my Al Oud. <laughs> so that is it, guys. That is my thoughts on these. Uh, you guys take care. I will see you soon. Uh, the aura, the, damn it. What's going on? <laughs> now, uh, now nah, you're not really going to get a boozy feel. Okay. Don't really get. Now, if you're looking through the notes, uh, you read some of the. Re re uh, yeah, there's lots of. I hate feminine fragrances. <laughs> I don't really hate. <laughs>